Hello everybody, Morlibus here, bringing you a quick video on item sorting and some problems with a uh, basic design that I've been using and I thought I'd share that with you. So let's get started. Uh, this is the standard design that I kind of use for my witch farm. So I've set it up with witch farm drops and it consists of a row of hoppers. I might get rid of these blocks just to show you a better look at the thing. And I did this just so you could see Kind of how you could disguise it behind a wall or something like that. But here you got a pipeline of hoppers all pointing one direction and below those hoppers you have your sorting or your filter hopper so that determines what items can go into it. So here I have them all set up. Each one has one item of the particular drop and then 21 filler items that I've used bone meal that I've renamed to filler. So whenever a piece of redstone travels into this hopper this guy gets first crack at pulling it down, and that goes for the other ones as well. So you never used to be able to do that in some of the snapshots. Hopper timings were all over the place. It used to be based on location of the hopper itself, or the order in which you placed them, but then when you reloaded the chunk, that all got reset to where they were in the world. Now it seems they have resolved that, and in my testing, I have seen that it gets a 50-50 split depending on where it's introduced into the system. So if we get some, well, let's get a stack of redstone. And if I introduce a stack into this hopper here, all of them are going to get piped into this one, but kind of one at a time. So as soon as they're introduced here, you can even see them, this guy gets first crack at them. So all of them are going to end up in this first space here, and none of them will end up over into the next spaces in the system. So because of this logic here, which is pretty much the exact same thing as this, you introducing redstone here, this guy can take redstone, so it's all going to go down there. Okay, so now if I were to introduce the redstone instead directly into this hopper, we will notice something different. It's going to feed a 50-50 split, basically. So half the items are going to go into the hopper directly below, but the other half are going to be sent over here and then pulled down to this one. So we get 32 and 32. So this seems fairly reliable to me in my testing. I did a long pipeline of this and introduced items at various spots and it all seemed to follow the same principle. So going back to this item sorting here, you used to have to use like droppers or water stream or something. Now you can just use hoppers. It seems to work reliably and hopefully will remain so. There's a problem with this machine, and we'll demonstrate that over here. Let's say your inventory is full, and there's no place to put the items. So here I've got redstone again. This lower hopper is full. It's got nowhere to put the items, so it's not going to get rid of them. And then we have this machine here as the filter. So when we start introducing items, now we could just replicate a pipeline if we wanted to. When we start adding items in here, it's set up so that as soon as it, hit, it gets one more item, it's going to give off a signal strength of two, which activates this repeater, which turns off the torch, which depowers this block and would allow this, this hopper here to pull out an item. So typically it would pull out that item there before that torch gets activated again. And then that prevents this hopper from taking any more items out of this machine. So, however, because the unit is full, and because of this design in its um, tileable form, where it relies on signal strength from the redstone to work, so we got a signal strength of two, and it doesn't interfere with the ones beside it because typically it doesn't get a signal strength higher than two, except if the machine becomes full. So if I throw the rest of the stack in there, this hopper is going to start to receive them, and as soon as it gets additional, I think, 23 items, it's going to bleed into a signal strength of three. And this is where the problem occurs. So now we've got these repeaters that have turned on and typically there would be a torch there as well. And another block and uh, another hopper. Oops. And another filter system as well. Now, if this guy had anything in it, it's automatically getting pulled out. So if we had it set up in a similar design like that, 
being ready to filter out an object, all those filter and objects get yanked out because this guy got too many items in it and activated the one adjacent to it. So that's the problem with this basic design. Now, if you're if you got it set up in such a manner that you have lots of extra storage or that that won't ever happen, then not a problem. But I'll show you one method that I've kind of figured out on how to resolve it, and that's going to be our next design over here. But first, I've set this up with a bunch of items in it. So random drops, eight of each, except for gunpowder. I've gone ahead and I've I filled up the gunpowder spot so that it's completely full. It's got room for, I think, 32, which we can't actually access, but it's the hopper right below here. Um, if I go really fast, yeah, 32 space. Oh, and the item frame still fell off. But that's okay. We won't worry about that. So if I turn off this lever here, it's going to deactivate this hopper, and this hopper's going to start to pull items out, and we'll see the, the lights at the back light up, just indicating which items are going into the system right now. So right now it's getting sticks. Right now it's getting gunpowder. And as soon as this fills up, it's going to, I think, if I, if I put enough items in there, which I may not have. Oh, okay, so this, item, this is it working kind of how you would expect, except now, if we look in that hopper, it's completely full, so it can't receive any more items. So if we were to put, and I do believe it is 23 extra items, so let's test that out. If I were to do that and let that go, we will see the gunpowder one is pulling in items and when it gets too many items it's going to bleed over into the two adjacent spots now we might need to add one more item for that to happen we do so now it's bleeding over and if we look at these items these ones are getting pulled out and the system is now broken so your glowstone it took out all the filler items and your sugar it took out all those filler items so now let's say we're introducing sticks into the system all those sticks aren't going to make it to the stick location. They're just going to go to the first available spot, which is now the, gl the glowstone. So it kind of broke. And the only way to recover it would be to empty out your gunpowder one or whichever one overflowed. And then resupply your hopper there with a filler item. Now, this was a nice design, and it's nice and compact. And... This is a little bit bulkier, but it does resolve that problem. So in this example, this is how you could have it. So it's kind of flush with the wall. It involves, if we exclude the filter and the pipeline, it has an additional three hoppers to get the items to a chest. This one has an additional seven hoppers. So it's a bit more expensive, four more hoppers to kind of get the same look. And then it has an extra comparator, repeater, and two redstone dust per Per section. Now, what this does differently, it still has the exact same thing at the back to detect the items coming through, to turn off a torch, to depower this block, to allow this hopper here to pull any additional item out of that hopper. The only difference is it has another comparator at the front here. So this comparator is reading through this block. It's going to read this hopper here. And as soon as this hopper has um, 20 three, this is where the 23 was, as soon as that one has 23, except I got to turn that one off, there we go, so as soon as this guy has 23 items in it, it's going to output a signal strength of two, no, did I get that wrong, <laughs> 24 items, or am I, oh, I put them in the wrong one, okay, 23. Okay, so as soon as that has 23 items into it, it's going to get output a signal strength of 2. I'm just going to turn on this repeater here, which is going to power the filter items. This guy here. So now, even though he accepts a redstone, um, he's not going to... Oops. This is just for me playing around before. He's not going to actually take that redstone. Instead, that redstone is going to go all the way to the end into an overflow chest. 
and that's just for any item that can't be filtered by the system or in this case any item that can't be filtered by the system or where there's no room for that item in the system. So that takes care of that so now no items will ever get more in there and it's set up as well so that if at any point there it is able to take more items it should pull those items out which it has because this hopper is not powered so even though this one's powered and it's not able to pull any items out or push any items this one underneath is still able to pull so as soon as there's room in the inventory for these guys to move forward it's able to do so and it disables the lock so now this can receive redstone again so we got the same thing set up here I think this time I've set it up correctly so I got a various amount of items we've got enough gunpowder maybe it's 24 enough gunpowder to cause the system to go into a lock and then I've also thrown some extra gunpowder at the end here that will not be able to make it into the system but it should also not break the system so this would typically break the system in the other design and all these drops here would end up into the glowstone spot again but that shouldn't happen here so if we do that oops looks like I got rid of those lamps these are just for indication so that we can see where items are going while we're doing this test. You don't need to have those for the design. So now stuff's going into the gunpowder. It's locked itself out. It can receive no more gunpowder. The other items are still able to go through to their designated spot. And then any other gunpowder will bypass this area and make it into the overflow chest. And now that's where we're at right now. So if we look down here, these ones should have the eight that I introduced into the system. And then at the end here, we'll start to see the excess gunpowder making its way through. And then if we were to, let's say, take out a stack of gunpowder, that will now filter through and it's already unlocked itself. And now it will allow gunpowder to enter into the system again. So this one cannot be broken. It is unfortunately a lot bigger, or a decent amount bigger. It does take a few more hoppers and a bit more redstone, and it is a bit wider of a design. So if you're trying to hide it into a wall, you do need a little bit more area. But it is kind of fail-safe, and it does provide a bit more storage, I guess, with the hoppers as well. And yeah, anyway, I thought I would share that with you guys. And if you have any other ideas on how this could be accomplished, please let me know. And yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, let me know that as well. Leave a comment or a like. And if you'd like to replicate this, it's a fairly simple design. So I'll just give you a sideways view at it. And you can replicate it for yourself. And yeah, this is tileable, so you can keep going as long as you want. Anyway, guys, we will see you in another episode. Thank you for watching.